Jesus tells a story about a man traveling from one city to the next. And while en route, unfortunately, he gets mugged. Not only does he get robbed, but he gets left along the side of the road half dead. Now, as the story progresses, it takes a surprising turn because Jesus explains how an important religious person begins to walk by where the traveler's been left for half dead on the side of the road. But unfortunately, this religious person, upon noticing the guy laying there, he, he kind of pretends he doesn't notice him, goes to the other side of the road and just keeps on going. To add insult to injury, this happens a second time as another religious person is coming by. And again, he too pretends he doesn't see the guy on the side of the road. And he crosses over the other side and keeps going on his way. And I thought, what made these two apparently religious men ignore the needs of this guy on the side of the road? Uh, perhaps they just felt like they were too busy to stop and help. Maybe they were afraid. Maybe they thought the muggers were still nearby. Maybe they were afraid they were going to let someone down on the other end of their journey that they had to get there in time for. Maybe they just had other ways to rationalize why they didn't step in and help. But at any rate, they just kept going. Finally, a third man comes by whom the Bible describes as a Samaritan. Uh, the Samaritans at this point were, were at odds with the Jewish people. So this, this uh, nice Jewish guy who's been mugged and left by the side of the road is really a, a natural enemy of the Samaritan. If not an enemy, at least not the kind of person that, that the two of them, they wouldn't hang out with one another. Uh, just the opposite. They would generally avoid each other in the marketplace. But this time, unlike the two religious figures that went by, the Samaritan traveling down the road notices the guy in the ditch. And he must have looked and thought, and, and maybe that compassion started welling up in his heart, and he had to make a decision about what he was going to do. Was he going to intervene? Was he going to help? Was he just going to feel compassion and keep going? Or was he going to act on that feeling of compassion and actually demonstrate compassion to this man in need. Well, this Samaritan was a man of courage. He overcame his fears, his fear that the muggers would return, his fear that uh, maybe this guy would reject him when he came to, his fear that it might cost too much to help him, his fear that this commitment he would have to make to help would be bigger than he had anticipated. And he summoned up his courage demonstrated compassion by going to the half-dead man and putting him on his own animal so they could travel to the, the nearest inn. And when they get to the inn, in our day we'd say it was the health clinic maybe or the hospital, well, he takes them in and not only pays the initial down payment or the copay that was owed, but he actually left his credit card with the innkeeper and said, if he needs anything else that this initial payment doesn't cover, you just put it on my tab. And when I return, I'll make sure we get everything settled up. And that statement really struck me from Luke chapter 10, that he said he was going to return. This wasn't just a, a one-shot deal for the Samaritan where he's just going to hand off a couple bucks and be done with it, but he was going to take an interest and follow through to make sure that this man was properly cared for. This Samaritan's a role model for us. He is a real man of compassion, but not just compassion, he's a man of courage. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about how we all need the courage for compassion. It takes courage to really demonstrate compassion to others. Jesus was the ultimate example of this. Uh, there's one story in Scripture in Matthew 14 where it says, Jesus looked out on the crowds and had compassion for them. And of course, Jesus didn't just have feelings of compassion. He acted on those feelings. He then demonstrated compassion. In the passage in Matthew 14, he actually goes around healing the sick and helping the people. But we know Jesus did more than that. When Jesus looked out on the crowds with compassion, when he looks on you and me 
with compassion. He does so much for us. In fact, it was the courage that, to show compassion that enabled Jesus to make the ultimate sacrifice for us, to die on the cross for our sins, to, to experience the physical abuse and anguish, the torture that he experienced, and to, to, to experience the wrath of God for our sin on himself. <laughs> Talk about overcoming fears. There were so many reasons, so many excuses, so many, so many legitimate reasons for why Jesus didn't need to do that for us. But he had the courage to act in compassion on our behalf. And I'm thankful for that. And that, that should motivate us to be people of compassion. That should motivate us to, to have the courage to show compassion. Because, let's face it, compassion always comes with a cost, doesn't it? Sometimes that cost is small, a few dollars to meet a physical need. Uh, sometimes that cost is in our time uh, to be interrupted from our normal routines and to take the time to listen, the time to help, the time to, to have a shoulder to be cried on or, or to help bear someone's burden. And sometimes I think it's easier to be compassionate to the people out there than it is to the people that are close to us. Sometimes it takes more courage and the cost is greater for us to help those that are around us. But then I remember Jesus. And I remember the Good Samaritan. And how their eyes were open for the needs around them. And then they didn't shy away. They didn't cross over to the other side of the road. They had the courage to show compassion. May we too be courageous, compassionate people.